This video is a follow on from the last video in the playlist and here in this video we're going to have a look at the min function and how it can be used with a Python list. The min function will return the minimum value stored in the list, i.e. returns the item from the list with the minimum value. Consider this computer program here. If we look at this line, you can see we're creating a list of integers, and there's four elements in the list, and this list is bound to this name. On the next line, we're invoking the min function, and we're passing in the name of the list. And what this will do, it'll look to the elements here and decide which is the smallest element which element has the smallest value and of course the smallest value is 2 so that 2 will be assigned to this min value here and this line will simply print out this literal string together with the min underscore value that was found which should be 2 so when we look at the runtime of this program what we will see is this the minimum value is 2 pretty straightforward nothing complex about that this program is almost the same as the one we've just considered the difference being that I've chosen different values here and if you look to the values you can see that three of them are now floats and one of them is an integer whereas in the last program all of the items were storing an integer if we go on to this line we can see that what this will do it'll find the minimum value in this list and of course that's two so when we come here and we execute this line we would expect the output to be as you can see here the minimum value is two in other words the min function had no problem dealing with a list that had mixed types i.e. in this list that is integers and floats it had no problem finding which one was the minimum value in this case the last two programs have shown that the min function has no problem finding the item with the minimum value when the items are all of type number ie floats and integers what if the elements contain strings before we answer that question let's consider the following program this program consists of a for loop and within the loop we have this print statement which will be executed a number of times and the number of times it will be executed will be dependent upon this range function here now when we go into the loop the first time the value of i takes up this start value here 65 and because this is a step of one the next time into the loop i will have the value of 66 then 67 then 68 and it'll carry on until it gets into the 90s and we'll take it up at 95 then it'll be 96 and then it stops it doesn't go as far as the 97 because this is the stop value so what this range function will do it'll give i the value of 65 all the way up until 96 in steps of one so when this executes on the first time through the loop this i here will have the value of 65 now what this function will do it will return the character for the value of i and when you take this function in to play and you're saying what is the character for 65 it'll return capital A so when we go around the loop again this I will now be 66 and this function will tell us it's capital B and of course this here will be 66 so it'll keep on going around the loop and what we're going to see at the output is the following and this is just the first half of the output and you can see this is the print statement output of the first time in the loop and it's telling us we have capital A is the character for the ASCII value 65 so this a was put here because of this function returning capital A and this 65 was put here because of this I here and if we look at the rest of the output we can see that we have all of the outputs for the I value of 65 all the way up to 96 and the character output for 96 is this one here if you look at uppercase Z you can see that the ASCII value for that was 90 now what this output is showing us is that these characters have a sequence representation a being 65 b being 66 then we can see it's 67 68 all the way down to 96 for this character 
here. To emphasize the point, let's have a look at this computer program and you can see it is almost identical to the one we've just considered. The difference is I've altered the range function. In this instance, I'm passing in 97 as the start value. 123 is the stop value and I'm keeping the step the same and if we have a look to the print we can see that that is identical to the previous program so when this program executes what we will see is the following output now it is clear there is an order being expressed here if you look to this column you can see that goes from a to p and if you look here you can see it goes from 97 to 112 in steps of one. If you come here for the rest of the alphabet, you can see it goes from Q to Z, and over here you can see it goes from 113 to 122. So choosing this range function here has allowed us to look at what the ASCII values are for the lowercase characters of the alphabet. Now I can write a computer program that would ask the question, is lowercase a as a character smaller than lowercase z? Now to help me understand which is the smaller, which is the minimum value, I would look here to the value of 97 for lowercase a, and I'd look here to 122 for lowercase z, and clearly a is the one that's the most minimum, because lowercase a has a smaller ASCII value than lowercase Z. If I were to write a computer program that asked the question, is lowercase a smaller, i.e. more minimum, than uppercase a, i.e. capital A, then I would need to look to their ASCII value, and I can see that the lowercase a has the value of 97. Now, if you look back in the video, you will have seen that uppercase a had the value of 65 for its ASCII value. Consequently, it's clear to see that if uppercase A had the value of 65 and lowercase A has the value of 97, then uppercase A is more minimum than lowercase A. Let's consider this computer program and you can see that I have created a list that has within it F, G, H and I as strings of length 1 and each of these characters is in uppercase and the question is which one of these has the minimum value well if you look we have f g h i now that's the order that they appear in the alphabet and earlier in the alphabet we have the smaller numbers so f i would have to look up its ascii value but i can assure you that it is smaller than g and G has a smaller ASCII value than H, and H has a smaller ASCII value than I. So the earlier they appear in the alphabet, the smaller their value. So what this will do, it'll return F, and this line will then print the minimum value is, and the minimum value that was returned. So what we should see at the output is the minimum value is F, and we can see that's the case here. Let's now consider this computer program here, and it's almost identical to the one we've just looked at. The difference being here, you can see I've changed the F and the G to lowercase. Now what this list has are four items, and each of these items is a string of length one. Some of the items are lowercase letters of the alphabet, and two of them are uppercase letters of the alphabet. Now, which of these four is the most minimum? Well, looking at them, how do you decide what's the most minimum when you've got letters of the alphabet? Well, because programming languages, as we've already discussed in this and the previous video, have ANSI and ASCII values representing them, and these values are binary patterns, and these patterns have a numeric value, and if we consider what those numeric values are, if we look at F, for example, that's lower case F, it has the value of 102 in our number system. Of course, it would be in binary within the computer. G, well, that's 103, because G comes after F, and we can see that it's gone from 102 to 103. Now, H, 
That has an ASCII value. Let's have a look at its ASCII value. And it's got the ASCII value of 72. And I, which comes after H in the alphabet, and it is uppercase I, it will therefore have one value bigger than the 72. And that has the value of 73. So now, as we have reflected up on the ASCII and the ANSI values that are under the bonnet of the programming language we're having to execute here, we now need to ask which of these has the lowest value, which one of these is the minimum value. And it's the H because it's ASCII code, you can see is 72 which is smaller than the ascii codes for the other characters in this list so when this program executes it should say that the minimum value is h and you can see it does that here the min and the max functions are both example of built-in functions in Python. And if we turn our attention to what this video is on, the min function, what I can say without looking at the code of the min function that's given to us by Python, I'm sure that within it, it will be using relational operators. It'll be using operators that allow for the comparison of two variables. One of them, of course, will be this one, the relational operator that decides whether something is smaller than something else because this means less than so we need to bear that in mind when we consider the following computer program let's now consider this computer program and again it's almost identical the difference being if we look to the items in the list you can see that two of them are strings one is a float and one is an integer and when I attempt to use the min function on this list, we're going to have a problem. And the problem is shown here. And the error it is telling us on this line is if we come over here, we can see we've got this relational operator, which is suggesting we're asking the question in the min function, is the instance of the integer type less than the instance of the string type? And the truth of the matter is the min function cannot compare these values that are of different types, instances of different classes. This is the instance of the integer class, and this represents an instance of the string class. If we look to this program, we can see everything here was an instance of the string class and the min had no problem with that. If we go back to the previous programs, they were examples of lists that contain number types. There was no problems there. But when we mix as shown here, where we've got strings and number types, we can see that the min function doesn't work. I've taken the same program, but I've altered the list. And now you can see the list contains strings that are longer than a length of one, and they contain Jones, Allen, Hartley, and Williams. Now, what the min function will do, it'll take this list and it'll decide which of these strings is the minimum one. And it starts off by looking at the first character, and it can see that they're all uppercase. And this one here, A, is the one that has the lower number, the lower ASCII value, than the J, H, and the W. So the minimum string in this case is Allen. So when we run this program, what you should see is this. The minimum value is Allen. Now consider this computer program. And again, you can see it's almost identical. The difference being I've changed the items in the list. And on this occasion, the items are Brown, Bailey, Baker, and Bennett. So Python will look at the first character and see that they're all the same. So it cannot make a decision based on the first character so it moves to the second character and it can say that that is R, A, A and E. Now that would suggest that it still can't make the decision because these two have B and A beginning. So it will then compare these two characters here, the I and the K, and decide which of those has the lowest ASCII value, or if you prefer, which of these comes earlier in the alphabet. So when this program executes, what you're going to see is this, Bailey. Because if you think of the alphabet, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So the I came before the K. And that means that I, because it's earlier in the alphabet, has an ASCII value that's lower than the K. Let's now consider this computer program here. And if you look 
I have made a small amendment and the amendment is shown here. This is now lowercase b for the string Bailey. Whereas up here for Bailey we can see that the first character was uppercase. So there is a difference between this and this. This one starts with a lowercase. But if we look at all of the strings we can see they all begin with b. These three begin with uppercase b and this one begins with lowercase b. Now when we looked at the program above it's returned Bailey if we look to this one is Bailey now the minimum well let's have a look at the ASCII value or the ANSI value for lowercase b and we can see it is 98 if we look to the uppercase b in the other three strings it has the value of 66 which is lower than the 98 Consequently, we can discard the Bailey and say that this is definitely not the minimum one. So what will happen now, we will just look at these three and we will go to this character position. And of course, we can see that the A comes earlier in the alphabet than the R and the E. Consequently, Baker is the minimum. So when we execute the program, you can see that it says the minimum value is Baker. Of course, you may be thinking that this description is a bit convoluted. Why should you be bothering about what the ANSI value or the ASCII value is of various characters to decide which string is more minimum than another string? If this is the case, we can come up with some rules that will enable you not to think in terms of ASCII and ANSI values. So here's some rules that you can think about. A, uppercase A, is earlier in the alphabet than uppercase Z. So A is more minimum than Z. Now I appreciate more minimum isn't the best of English, but what we're really saying here is if you are comparing strings, the earlier the character is in the alphabet, the smaller it is. So A has the value of 65 and Z, if you remember, has the value of 96. So we can say that A is more minimum than Z. So the earlier in the alphabet, the more minimum the character is. Is. If we go on, we can say this, A, lowercase a, is earlier in the alphabet than lowercase z, so a is more minimum than z. Of course, if we were going to compare a with a, uppercase a with lowercase a, we have to bear in mind that these are different. Uppercase a and lowercase a are regarded as being different if we're going to be comparing them because they have different ASCII and ANSI values. So what we can say to help us with this is uppercase letters of the alphabet are more minimum than lowercase letters of the alphabet. For example, uppercase A is 65 and lowercase A is 97. So if you had a string that was Jones with lowercase and Jones with uppercase, the one that would be more minimum is the Jones with the uppercase. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.